Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back to Challenges of Faith. I'm Gary McCann. Well, tonight we are in part three. James Keyes, the founder of the WIND Project, the Why I Never Project, is a nonprofit 501c3 corporation designed for young people to provide scholarships and exposure toward higher education and potential career interests. Stay tuned for all the James Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'm excited to be here again today. All right. That's like-minded. That's like-minded. Well, listeners, you've you walked through us and with us on part one and part two, and I know there are those of you who uh, were glad that we delayed until we got to part three so that James can finally share why and how he found the WIND Project, what it's all about, and so that Brother James can talk about the 88 creeds that he had all about the organization and um, for you, the listeners, to become a part of and support and in any way that God continue to lead. So, Brother James, lead us off. Well, you know, once again, I appreciate being on the show. Uh, it's been exciting, you know, having the opportunity to uh, be on here, you know, for uh, all three series and, you know, and today, uh, just ask that, you know, the Holy Spirit just have his way and, uh, you know, just uses us uh, to let the world know what it is that he wants the world to know. So, you know, with that being said, um, the WIND Project. Um, the WIND Project is a nonprofit organization, a 501c3 uh, organization, and um, it actually uh, came about uh, a couple of years ago. And um, it it really has stemmed from, you know, conversations uh, about, you know, frustrations, uh, you know, a lot of frustrations and 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 things that, uh, you know, were kind of going on, you know, in my life uh, that, you know, I was questioning and kind of wondering, you know, uh, why things, you know, weren't happening or shaping up the way that I had thought that they should have been. Um, especially when I felt like, you know, I had a lot of uh, relationships and contacts, you know, to people that could actually help me position myself uh, to uh, do some great things. And um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot, you know, um, throughout the process and um, throughout this journey, you know, of, uh, of searching and trying to find answers, trying to find truth, and trying to find um, the uh, answer to the reasons why. And uh, it had just so happened that, you know, when I was uh, uh, working uh, for an organization and I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and we were on our way to an event. It was a uh, an event for uh, young people, and, uh, and it was uh, – uh, a school actually, and it was an all boys school. And at the beginning of the school year, they have this event where all the young men uh, come on the first day of school and what have you, and they have as many male role models come in and help them tie their ties um, before they get ready to start school. And as we were driving on the way to uh, the school, um, my friend and I uh, were engaging in a conversation and you know, and we were talking about, you know, our history because we were building a relationship and getting to know each other and some of the things that we were involved in, you know, in our past and, you know, and, and what had got us, got us up to this particular position at that particular day. And, um, you know, and I was sharing with him, you know, some of the things that I had done, you know, in the past as far as, you know, uh, coming from the city of Canton, uh, moving to, you know, the city of Columbus um, and how when I was in the city of Canton, um, I had a position uh, 
with the city actually working directly for the mayor um, as the youth development director uh, for the uh, entire city. So all youth programming and, you know, and, and all things concerning youth and development uh, were channeled, you know, through my office and through me, you know, and then throughout the entire city. And and then uh, during that uh, duration, um, I was also blessed with some other opportunities to be able to work with a uh, sports agency. And, um, and in working with that sports agency, I was what they called, you know, a quote unquote, a runner. And, um, you know, as a runner, um, you know, you're, you're what they call like the first initial contact. So you would go to, you know, um, sporting events. Um, and particularly for me, it was basketball because my background was in basketball. I played basketball in college and so forth and so on. So sports agency that I was working for was a basketball agency. And uh, so I would travel and go to different colleges and, you know, and watch uh, basketball games of, you know, particular teams uh, of particular persons that, you know, the agency was interested in recruiting. And um, and in being the first initial contact, I would sit there, watch the games, make my assessments, so forth and so on, and then I would directly meet, you know, that young man and directly meet uh, their parents um, and uh, the coaches, you know, as well. And as I did that, you know, for about four years, um, obviously the relationships grew. And, um, you know, and I came into relationships with a lot of coaches and stuff um, on the, on the, on the uh, college level and um, also uh, networking um, throughout the uh, sports industry, you know, on the professional level and stuff as well. And, um, you know, as those four years went on, you know, some things had um, – some bumps in the road had uh, begun to take place. And, um, you know, some things kind of started to not go my way. And – you know, just like life, we run into challenges, and, you know, and as we run into those challenges, we begin to try to figure out how we can navigate those challenges, and and uh, and that's a very valuable lesson that I learned. You know, I, I, I started depending upon, you know, myself and trying to work things out, you know, for myself and depending on myself, you know, as the source. So that was a valuable lesson. Um, and as I tried to figure these things out, um, I just kept bumping my head, you know, over and over again and, you know, and, and it wasn't, uh, developing into the things that I wanted them to develop, um, develop into. And I began to, uh, settle for situations, relationships, you know, jobs, and um, things of that nature um, that I felt like um, I was more than qualified for, but because I wasn't in alignment to the source, um, you know, come to find out, it was like, this is where you are right now, and until you figure out that you need to totally depend on me, this is where you're going to, this is where you'll be. And these are the things that you will have to deal with. So, you know, once again, uh, we're having this conversation, uh, you know, uh, my friend and I, and, uh, you know, and I shared with him, you know, uh, over these years, you know, I've, I've built, built this, you know, uh, catalog of, of, of relationships and, you know, phone numbers of people and contacts and, and, you know, and it was like, you know, why I never, you know, um, am able, why am I never able to, um, you know, allow these things to develop the way that I envision them to develop? And, you know, why am I never, you know, at this event that I feel like I should be at? Or why am I never, you know, at uh, this basketball game or, you know, 
this location or rubbing shoulders with this person, you know, and that's where it began to stem from. And as 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 things began to uh, move on, and those questions became uh, continued to you know uh, pop into my mind. Um, you know, one day uh, the Holy Spirit started to speak to me, and um, and as He began to speak to me, He was showing me how I could take that "why I never" and change it into a positive, as as opposed to looking at it as a negative. So, um, it 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 almost it it directly became like a oxymoron, you know, because then the 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 why I never ended up changing into a, a win, you know, and that's what win stands for. It it's a um, uh, you know a play on words, an acronym, you know, win why I never. So. The, the the negative I decided to change into a positive and then it began to develop into such things as you know okay well why I never you know use drugs or why I never drink or why I never sin or why I never text and drive you know and as I began to look at these why I nevers and 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 looking at other situations and scenarios that I could fit with that why I never, it began to develop into a positive outlet. And that positive outlet, you know, ended up developing into uh, a program, you know, which is now the WIN project. So that's where it all started and it all began to develop from and um you know now uh it has grown into a situation to where you know we're working with young people and uh you know and we're taking young people on uh college tours which once again you know God allowed me to use my relationships uh with people and you know and with colleges and coaches and so forth and so on to be able to come to their campuses and take kids to their campuses and not only get a college tour, but to go to sporting events as well to give these kids a full-fledged college experience, um, you know, on on being on these tours with us in the WIN organization. And uh, it's turned out to be such a blessing and a wonderful thing. And, you know, and now we're trying to develop the situation to where we can partner with um, different corporations and different athletes to give out scholarship funds and scholarship money to kids uh, to be able to go to these particular schools that uh, we are doing our college tour at. So it's really turned out to be a huge blessing. And, you know, once again, God was able to turn that negative energy and those negative thoughts into a positive. So it's been a All blessing. right. All right, listeners, I know uh, Brother James has shared a lot. We're going to unpack that. Um, it's called uh, uh, respectfully taking the cookies from the top shelf and bringing them and making them clear. Everything has a beginning. And in that beginning, you heard Brother James talk about uh, how he started off and sports wise, collegiate wise, and working with the young adults and, and 4A City and directly 4A Mayor and so forth. So, Brother James, so you had a beginning, and through that beginning, uh, why do you feel, even though you're now with clarity, God has a plan and purpose for one's life, uh, uh, at what point was that desire placed upon your heart that you can remember uh, to want to help uh Uh, interact with the young adults and teenagers? Well, it kind of started, well, not kind of, it it started when I had left college 
and uh, my, you know, my playing days and stuff were over with, and uh, you know, and I, I really didn't know what it is that I had wanted to do, and I ended up uh, coming back to my hometown in Kent, and um, you know, at the early stages of this journey, um, an opportunity had came my way um, as far as uh, being able to work uh, with um, young middle school students um, through a organization at the time that was called uh, Gear Up. And uh, Gear Up was an organization that uh, uh, did things kind of similar. Um, they had a relationship with uh, Kent State University, and in the summertime, um, they targeted middle school kids, and uh, they would follow them all the way through high school, and if they maintained a certain grade point average, then they would be able to get a full scholarship to go to Kent State University. And uh, in the summertime, they would uh, actually um, spend some time out on the campus for a few weeks and, 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 and stay on campus and experience campus life and take classes uh, during the summertime. So essentially it was kind of like summer school, but summer school on a college campus, you know, to get acclimated with, you know, how things operate, and the feel of what college life uh, really was about. And, um, and then also um, with, with that, uh, an extension of the program, it allowed us to be like liaisons inside the high schools to be able to work uh, with the students uh, inside the high schools. And then from there, um, I was offered an opportunity to be um, the head basketball coach um, at the freshman level. So I got involved in programming, and then I also got involved in uh, coaching uh, high school basketball. And then from there, um, it, it just stuck with me. Uh, I've, I've been pretty much working with you ever since. And the oh. funny thing about it is no matter how much I tried to get away from it, you know, because mm-hmm. my, my degree is in business management, so I thought, mm-hmm. you know, I, I should have been in the world of business, you know, and, and you know, and doing some type of things, some sort of things that was, uh, you know, centered around business and, uh, you know, possibly wearing a suit, you know, to work. Uh, every day and, and, and things of that nature, but uh, God obviously had different plans for me. And just like I said, no matter how many times I tried to get away from it, he always steered me back in that direction. That's right. So as you alluded to and made clear for the listeners uh, that uh, God had a, you saw how God had a plan for your life. And it's interesting because as you know, parents or parent have a plan for your life and as you were sharing, you yourself have a plan for your life, and and as you continue along the journey and the development, then all of a sudden you interact with uh, the young adults. Well, let me ask you a question. The young adults you had a chance to, to interact with to try to teach them, how, how receptive were they? Because later on I'm going to turn around and ask your contrast between the youth you have been attempting to assist uh, in contrast to the ones you are attempting to assist now, and we'll look at it nationally of what's occurring as well. Well, as far as the youth being receptive, uh, I was kind of in a unique situation because, uh, you know, at the time I was still like in my mid twenties, um, mm-hmm. and and working with the youth, so you know, uh, it, it wasn't a major difference in in the uh the age range and then mm-hmm. we had a lot of common interests you know uh through the vehicle of sports um you know and obviously it was basketball and you know and I was still in you know decent playing shape and I could still play ball you know a little bit and things of that nature so it was just a natural respect that was there you know with the youth you know and Anytime, you know, uh, that respect began to be challenged, 
I, you know, I could invite him on the basketball court and I would show you. And then, and then mm-hmm. once I would show you, you know, uh, then, you know, that, that, that respect, um, uh, was reaffirmed. Mm-hmm. So, um, in, 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 in that aspect, uh, you know, the respect was there and then the relationships began to develop and they were more willing to be able to listen to, you know, what it is that I had to say and what it is that I had to offer them. And and they understood that, you know, a lot of the goals and and desires and interests that they shared and that they had, you know, I had already uh, experienced some of those things prior to. So not only was I able to uh, share with them, you know, some of the successes, but I was able to share with them a lot of the downfalls and and a lot of the poor choices and decisions um, that I made, you know, um, because uh, throughout that journey as well and and, in my, you know, early years, um, you know, I was one that, you know, didn't make some of the best decisions, you know, uh, even then. So uh, I – to, to to put it flat out, uh, brother Gary, I was hard hit. Mm-hmm. I was oh. <laughs> extremely hard, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And I I wanted to do a lot of things my way, and uh, and the, you know the sad thing about it was I was very unconscious about um, a lot of the decisions and choices that I made. Like I I I made choices without giving them second thought or without looking at the big picture, you know, two situations and how not only does it affect me, but how it affects others and, you know, and, and the people around you and the environments and, you know, things of that nature. And, uh, and it's funny because I, I really didn't uh, grasp a hold of that until I got a lot older. Um, mm-hmm. But um uh, you know, th- these are the similarities that I see um, in these young people today. You know, um, mm-hmm. we just make decisions just based off of impulse and just based off of right now. And uh, you know, and it's and it's and it's you know even more uh, that much more scarier uh, because. Uh, like I had talked about, you know, in the the uh, previous show, I believe it was part two, but uh, things are so much accessible now, you know, at a much faster rate. So uh, these kids, you know, are making quicker decisions, you know, at a quicker pace and a quicker rate than, you know, I was, you know, um, in the late 90s, you know, in the early 2000s and whatnot. So uh, how about go ahead? How about their parents? Um, how were you able to interact with their parent or parents um, while attempting to teach the uh, the youth who were uh, in middle school? Well, the the, the one thing that uh, has been a common um, denominator. Uh, you know, with the parents, you know, a, a, a ongoing uh, consistency with a lot of parents is the involvement. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, uh, we work with kids that are, you know, from the inner cities, and, um, you know, you have a small percentage of parents that are extremely involved with their kids' lives and know the happenings and the what's going on you know, with their kids, their school, their schoolwork, their activities, you know, and are truly invested. But then you have, you know, a lot of other parents that are disengaged. And a lot of them are disengaged for a lot of reasons. And the the, the biggest reason that I find that they're disengaged is because they're still dealing with their situations and issues personally as an individual and and because they're still dealing with those issues they begin to neglect their children 
and their children and, and, and the things that are going on in their children's lives. And, um, and, and that's, a, that's a very interesting dynamic. And uh, we have to uh, try to do, you know, the things that we can, um, you know, as a village to uh, be able to uh, pull uh, these parents, you know, from, um, you know, depression, from uh, the different vices, uh, that are in their lives that are causing them to neglect the most important thing, which is, you know, their time. Um, and that's what these kids want. They they want genuine time, you know, spent with mom and with dad, you know, um, because they, they – people think kids don't want, you know, discipline and structure. And that's really not the case, you know. But when you're in an environment that you don't see discipline and structure, especially from those that are supposed to be, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the parents or the guardians, um, of, of the ones that are supposed to be the pillars, you know, in the home, um, then it begins to affect, uh, you know, uh, uh, how they appreciate uh, discipline and structure. So it's not necessarily that they don't want it. Uh, they just don't know how to necessarily appreciate it. So they begin to detach themselves from it, and they seek it in other directions. And unfortunately, what I'm finding out is, those directions are in entertainment and music. They become the mentors to the children, you know. And the we all know that the things that you pay attention to the most, you know, and that's why the Bible says it's so important for you to guard, you know, your your eyes and your ears, your, your eye gates and your ear gates, because um, the things that we consume, you know, as a sponge, we begin to uh, transcend or, or, or transform into and become. And um, those are the things that are happening. The, 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 the rappers and the entertainers and all that stuff begin to become the parents. And what they say uh, holds more value and holds more weight than the actual pillar, the parent that is in the home and that they're living with every day. All right. Listeners, we're going to go into a break uh, for about five minutes. But before we do, let's go back with Brother James. So he started off interacting with young adults and um, working directly for a mayor and going to school and uh, from a business standpoint and had those aspirations of uh, looking forward to the, the day where he could utilize that degree. And maybe like some of you, uh, maybe that's where you are today, able to put on that suit, going into that eight to four, nine to five, or uh, maybe there are those of you who are of the opinion, I'm talking about eight hours. Maybe you're going to that office that's allowing you and having you work in, uh, from 8 a.m. to uh, 8 a.m., 12 years from now, with that suit on. But what Brother James learned and found out the realities of life was that he took another path. He thought he took another path. And as he so indicated that each time he attempted and has attempted to go on a different route and rule uh, as it relates to working and interacting with the young adults in their future, that He's learning and has learned that God had a different plan. But through that different plan, I don't know if you hear it or not, listeners, but don't you still hear that business degree still at work even today? When we return, we're going to continue on because Brother James has said a lot. He's talked about the fact of uh, the parents' interaction, and he's, uh, he's making a distinction, which is which is the right thing as it relates to uh, why the parent or parents may or may not interact um, uh, with their with their child, 
and the fact that the child uh, does want accountability, if the uh, child does, in fact, yearn for uh, that uh, parent or parents or role models or mentors or leaders to be in their life. And so we're going to continue on because, again, if you're listening carefully to Brother James as we're talking about the formation of the WIND project and, and how Brother James began and leading to the totality of what the project is about, uh, pay close attention because he said a lot about the sports world and events and scholarships and higher education and, and so forth. So that's where we are, and tonight is Brother James' night, and so therefore, Welcome back to Challenges of Faith. I'm Gary McCants. We have tonight part three, James Keyes, the founder of the WIN Project. James is sharing a lot this first hour. He's sharing a lot about the sojourn to how the WIN Project was founded and is moving forward. In our lives, as you know, we got to go back sometimes in order to go forward. But isn't it interesting, I hope you listeners, when you're listening to the words to the songs, they have meanings. For example, you know, James has talked about impatience, moving in the way in which he wanted to move. But as James continued to grow, he learned and is learning that God has his own plans. And once you get in line with his plans, then you understand that that weight was for a reason. But we left off, and we were talking about the fact of parent or parents and their child and their interest in their child. We left off talking about the fact that in the parent or parents' lives and all of our lives, that distractions can be there that can take us off balance for our child and children. And they know that just as well as what the child or children do can cause themselves to be off balance. We can be that child at any moment. So Brother James has found himself in that way as he grew. God used him to, on behalf of a city, used him to deal with individuals who wanted to aspire to college and learn about sports and through sports. God allowed him to be a teacher, a leader. But God still had and has a plan, even for Brother James, while James is being used to help the young adults. Brother James, again, thank you for being a part of Challenges of Faith. Let me um, return and um, um, you've said a lot as relates to um, the young adults and parents and so forth. Um, the young adults that um, you've had an opportunity to interact with and you have been attempting along the way, to cause them to take a look at their life and where they may be headed so that they could uh, get on the right path. And it doesn't, and it did not necessarily have to be about God, even though everything is about God. But because, as we talked about in part ones and part twos, but it has a lot to do with being in the real world and in the real world, there are decisions that have consequences that we all all face. So what challenges did you come across along the way where you were attempting to give your all in all, and at the same time sharing and showing from within as you did in actuality by going to the court and uh, showing the, the young adults uh, through the hoop game and showing them the importance of, uh, of winning, and at the same time, while winning, uh, oftentimes losing, frustration. So what were some of your challenges in trying to reach them? Well, uh, once again, um, you know, some of the challenges were, you know, just, uh, you know, the, the, the phrase, um, you know, can't tell me nothing, you know, just um, – being stubborn, and uh, you know, I used the word earlier, being hard-headed. Um, you know, at 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 a young age, and um, you know, and even um, uh, to this point, until you come into understanding, you know, you think we have all the answers uh, when we really don't. Um, and 
those are the things that uh, you know you notice uh, with the youth. And 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 the biggest thing is uh, the biggest misconception is uh, thinking that we grown. You know, they throw that word around a lot. You know, I'm grown, and we're in such a hurry to be grown at at a young age. <laughs> and then the funny part is, you actually become grown, and you have to live by grown standards. You know, and what I mean by that is, you know, having to pay mortgages and rent and, you know, cell phone bills and for car payments and insurance and, you know, and and all these things that come with being grown, all these responsibilities. And then you find yourself saying, well, I wish I could be, you know, uh, in high school or in college again, you know. And uh, so it's funny, you know, how that, how that works uh, because, you know, like I said, we're in such a hurry to be grown, but we really need to enjoy, you know, the growth process and the development process and take in as much wisdom as possible by the ones that come before us. Um, you know, I, I used to try to tell the kids that if you are able to take the things that I'm trying to give you at my age now, you know, which was like, you know, 25 or, you know, at the time, and these kids may have been like 15, 16 years old. So, you know, it was like a 10-year difference. So I would let them know, like, if you are able to take that information and process it the right way and, and channel those thoughts, then that puts you two steps ahead of where I was, you know, at that time. Um, if you value what it is that, you know, I'm trying to share with you, and if you trust that, you know, I'm trying to, you know, uh, guide you in the right direction, because ultimately I care about, you know, uh, your outcome and uh, your success. And, um, you know, and once again, um, going back to the parents, you know, uh, those things uh, come into question because of the trust. You know, and through lack of discipline, believe it or not, and through lack of structure, believe it or not, uh, it affects trust because, and see, and once again, that's why I said, you know, these kids want discipline and structure because through that, it helps develop trust. You know, if I'm making bad choices and I'm making bad decisions, and then as a parent, I turn around and I punish my kid in some type of way, it's letting them know that hey, I'm invested in your life. I really care about your life. And if you make these these decisions, then I can see, you know, a, a, a negative outcome taking place in your life. And these kids aren't stupid. They, they may not like it, but they're not stupid. They understand that. They understand that, okay, they're looking out for my best interest. Although I don't like it at the moment, but they are looking out for my best interest, so ultimately they must love me. And when these kids don't get that at home and they go into the school buildings or they go into other structured situations and then they run into authority figures and those authority figures are standing their ground as far as what's right, then these kids now you feel challenged, you feel threatened. And that's why they have the type of reactions that they have, and they buck up against authority figures to the point where they want to get physical with the authority figures because of that lack of that that trust, that lack of trust, which ultimately makes them think that somebody is out to harm me as opposed to help me and love me. So that's what these kids are dealing with, and. You know, and this is it. What hurts me the most is, you know, uh, we call it village, you know, uh, within, you know, uh, the African American community and stuff like that. But um, now uh, the, the village has disintegrated and basically got to the point where it's non existent because now they don't even want the authority figures to say anything to the child 
even if the authority figure is telling the child the right thing. Because now I believe the parent feels so guilty behind the fact that they're not doing the things that they need to do, you know, as a parent in, in providing, you know, that discipline and structure. So now they feel like they got to step in and, you know, confront the authority figure to compensate for the lack of love that they're that they're initiating at home because they're not providing the discipline and structure. So it's amazing how it all correlates and it all works together. And uh, this is where we are right now um, in 2019. The, um, the young adults that you are speaking of and the young adults that have been, are, and will be uh, gravitate and the ones that, uh, toward the WIND project and the ones you're helping – what are the differences? Because we're talking about uh, young adults who uh, we talk about the tr- trust factor and, uh, the, and uh, the love factor. So what, what is the, the difference between those uh, youth, even though all both are the same, and the ones who um, have the aspiration to pursue scholarships and, and, and higher education and so forth? So what's, what's the difference between the two? Well, the difference is um, they have a want, you know. They actually have a want and they actually, you know, see themselves somewhere. And through that that talent or that ability, you know, they're able to negate a lot of, of, of the negative views and uh, the negative influences that come from their peers um, who don't necessarily have goals and don't necessarily feel that uh, they are capable and they deserve better. Um, So the ones that actually do feel that way about themselves, uh, they have a tendency to work a little bit harder, to be a little more willing to listen, to be a willing uh to be a little more willing to put forth the effort in order to accomplish what it is that they have sought out to accomplish you know some of them it could be just wanting to get away from their environment and the places that uh they come from uh some of them are driven you know by uh the athletic world and they have recognized that they are unique in their talent and it could possibly become something for them. Or some of them are able to recognize that, you know, I've been gifted with my hands and, you know, I have a skill that needs to be developed, you know, via trade or I'm talented in uh, technology or, you know, so forth and so on. But at some point in their lives, something was able to trigger to be able to allow them to recognize that they have a a gift and you know and 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 in being able to recognize that they're willing to pursue that gift and explore what it could possibly take them to and lead them to other than the current state that they're in at the moment so that's what I'm um able to recognize and then on the dark side of things, you know, you just have some youth that just have no want whatsoever. Um, and those are the hardest ones to be able to uh, reach. You know, at some point in their lives, something created some type of impact that has allowed that, has allowed that child to be stuck in a place uh, to, to where – they're having a hard time getting past that trauma that uh, has 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 triggered the space that they are in at that moment, and it's very very hard to dig into uh, those situations and scenarios to pull those kids, you know, from uh, that place that they're rooted in, and all it is is darkness. Is is darkness. And 
you know, and as we know, um, you know, as Christians um, and, and as uh, followers of Christ, you know, there's some type of spirit that's there that has entangled that child, that has caused that child to be in that negative space that they're in. And now they're dealing with the anxieties and the depressions and, you know, and all these other labels that they want to throw on these kids. And now they want to connect them to all these meds and all these terminologies and, you know, and call it everything other than what it is, which is that spiritual form, that spiritual battle of, you know, of of demonic spirits and being set free. And us, Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You, you haven't finished your thought. Okay, and 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 us as you know believers, you know we recognize these things, but we are in a confinement because we are kind of we are kind of trapped in a uh, in a place where uh, the system has put in these. Uh, regulations, uh, uh, these rules, and uh, and they are trying to tell us how to engage according to a worldly view and a worldly perspective of how we should, you know, um, handle the kids and and try to help develop the kids, and uh, it's not it's not necessarily. Uh, uh, what's needed to totally set these kids free in a true manner and in a true state of being free from captivity of the demonic. The um, I want <clears throat> to go back uh, with the um, uh, the young adults that we're talking about and the parent of parent. But before I do, I want to. Um, provide a, uh, a real-world personal example. I remember um, um, a time where uh, having to take a stand of accountability, uh, uh, I want to use two examples. And I was being interviewed on a radio program, and and arrogantly, and I can say that now, um, but firmly, uh, I knew that uh, or somebody had tipped me off that a lot of politicians would be listening uh, because it surrounded young adults. But I also knew that the listeners that amongst the politicians and law enforcement community and so forth were not going to be all uh, cheerleaders. Some would uh, wait and hear what you have to say and maybe put you in a catch you a got you um, way. But on that particular interview, I made it clear that my child, my son, uh, if my son was out in society, not the way in which I know and he knows he should not be, that he was going to be held accountable by his father who loved now, the second example, I remember uh, 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 just uh, arriving back from the corporate world, and and um, and I, I remember uh, taking a look at my son's uh, grades, and I know he needed, and so we both sat down, and it was my area, and he was dealing with uh, uh, the topic was constitutional law, and and uh, uh, we sat there together. Turned it in, but before we got there, I made sure, uh, as a parent, going to the school board meetings, and and I remember uh, becoming emotional, making it clear to the leaders of that, that that board meeting that I'm here, even though I could help many young adults, I'm here for my child. But it all stems from where that parent happens to be in their own lives. And I use those examples leading back to where you were talking about the young adults were 
the exposures you've had with them as relates to those that may not have aspiration versus those who may, though both do, uh, if they do, from one perspective. But we want to center it back to the parent or parents because the question now is, uh, with the young adults and the parent or parents that you've interacted with, where was uh, God at? Where have you found God at in your interaction communication-wise with the young adult and or uh, and the parent or parents? Well, I mean, um, for a lot of the parents, I mean, you know, God um, – appears to be, you know, non-existent. And, you know, and I use the word appear um, <clears throat> because if he is existent, um, they still haven't been able to figure out uh, that relationship um, uh, with with God uh, for themselves in order to be able to deal with a lot of the issues and the traumas and the stigmas and, you know, and all of those things that have um, been able to suppress and control their lives uh, as well. And, um, you know, and, and if and if you're not able to do that, then how can you do that, you know, uh, for yourself? And how can you do that uh, for your child? So a lot of it is, uh, it appears to be, you know, non-existent. Uh, for those um, that uh, it is uh, uh existent too um it, it it's funny because you would it would seem like um uh, you know a lot of those children would be um e- extremely different but uh you know at that at that tender uh, age of of being a teenager and trying to find out who you are and wanting to fit in and not be the one that uh, stands out because if you stand out, then there's a potential for you to be picked on or be bullied or be uh, cast as different, you know, so forth and so on. And a lot of these kids don't have the maturity and and are not strong enough mentally to be able to handle that. So they choose to fit in as opposed to adhere to the advice that a believer of a, a, a parent of a believer um, shares with them as far as, you know, uh, principles and guidelines and, and, and things of that nature that are Christ oriented to help them uh, be able to navigate um, in life and in this world. So they have a sense of rebellion uh, within them, even though they may have, you know, accepted Christ as well. But because of that parent that is walking with Christ, you know, um, we have been granted a lot of grace and a lot of mercy. And that has what has been able to keep us, um, and not only us as parents, but has been able to keep our children, you know, uh, from a, a lot of circumstances and situations that they put themselves in because of the fact that, um, they're struggling with that balance of, you know, um, choosing what's right and what's wrong, you know, based upon, you know, reputation and how their peers are going to look at them. So um, because of, you know, our parents, you know, that um, have God in their lives and, you know, and are going to church and, you know, and are strong in the, in their faith, um, it's, it's helping keep things balanced and that's what we're seeing we're we're seeing where the world is becoming more and more unbalanced and uh people are beginning to um you know uh, lose their faith and lose their way and are moving in a in a total different direction and the evil is rising and the uh sense of righteousness is beginning to uh, decrease, and um, and now the balance is off, you know. And and when the balance is off, uh, 
more and more evil is beginning to be implemented and 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 put in place uh, because you know we we all know and we all understand you know how the world uh, uh, works you know and you have these elite groups and you have these elite families who tend to control pretty much everything you know from our banking systems to our school systems to you know the airways and news and you know radio and you know and 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 so forth and so on. So they're constantly driving the narrative and pushing the narrative. And because they have a particular belief in a different God and a particular belief in a different system, you know, they're imposing their will, you know, more and more because there isn't that resistance. There isn't that pushback um, where, uh, where the numbers are becoming more and more imbalanced. So because of that, um, you know, the the, uh, filter isn't quite there anymore, and we are becoming more and more uh, consumed, you know, by darkness. And, um, you know, these are, once again, the days and times that we're dealing with, and we see how uh, it's uh, affecting, you know, the generations, you know, more and more and how they are beginning to uh, get engulfed um, into this darkness, you know, more and more. I can remember how, you know, when I was in high school, you know, and stuff like that, um, just seeing the difference in uh, the respect in authority figures, you know, and, and when somebody, an authority figure asked us, you know, to stop clowning around as much and, you know, or get to where we were supposed to be, you know, a lot of us have more of a tendency to listen to that, you know, or when, you know, there were um, more individuals uh, that were in the schools that attached themselves to gangs, um, but now you see where uh, the the opposite, where uh, there are more groups of gangs in the schools, and now there are more individuals that are willing to stand alone. But when I was in school, you know, a lot of us looked at that and was like, you know, that was corny to us. We was like, nah, we didn't, you know, want to be in no gang or anything like that. Like, we didn't need that, you know. We we, we, we felt like, you know, we could hold our own, you know, as individuals. And plus, we didn't necessarily need that because, you know, we had what we felt like was our you know, fraternity of brothers or whatever through sports, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, now we're seeing, you know, the complete opposite where, you know, they have to feel, you know, that embrace of, you know, a gang or a clique or, you know, what have you because they're looking for, once again, that love. And, and that love is identified as something that is totally false. They're being deceived, you know. And once again, in that deception, you can see the inner works of the enemy, you know, because that's who he is, and that's the spirit that he interjects. He wants to deceive us, you know, as as a people. So, so it sounds like what's going, it sounds like the foundation. It sounds like the foundation uh, that absolutely. you're speaking of, as relates to going back to the home. Um, because I know I heard you say earlier as it relates to young adults and you alluded to the parent or parents. Uh, could not the parent or parents uh, from stemming from the home, um, uh, I mean, you can know God and not be in the right relationship with God, or you cannot know God and, uh, uh, and, and without understanding that, you're in a uh, spiritual stronghold bondage because the word talks about one God not being the author of confusion, and two that the right. the adversary, the enemy of your soul, uh, is the one that's uh, the causing the causing this havoc. And so, as you are sharing that, uh, the young adult who, uh, like Proverbs talks about, who has been taught at home. They've now gone out into the school world, and and maybe the peers, for whatever reason, uh, maybe peers who are uh, in identifiable um, position uh, have now swayed each other over 
to such a degree that they're now cleaning each other, and as you just alluded to, uh, giving each other what they think is, is love while putting hate and hurt on others while hurting themselves. So coming down to the authority figures who are trying to share with them what's right, but the resistance, because as you alluded to, the hard-headedness of not wanting to hear and therefore turn for their lives so that they're making wise choices. But Brother James, even in sharing that and what's occurring, how do you look at the young adults uh, nationally? Do you, Are you equating the same without making an, an assumption or a judgment that um, it's about the home or it's about society? So how do you equate the young adults we're speaking about with the young adults that that are here nationally, if we're talking about the United States, um, uh, are they in the same condition or mode? What say you? Yeah, I, I, I honestly believe that it's, it's the same type of condition, you know, uh, because the enemy doesn't look to attack uh, only, you know, particular territories, you know, or particular regions. You know, he wants to impose his will on the world, you know, so why would I just stop at, you know, Ohio, you know, or why would I just stop at, you know, New York City or California, you know? Um, my goal is to bring upon as much sin and as much darkness, you know, to this world so I can ultimately, you know, reach my goal, you know, because we all know that the enemy has a goal at the end of the day, you know, and if you study the word and you understand the word, you know, it has to get to the point where we're getting back to the days of Noah in order for things to be, you know, turned over to him as, you know, the the Antichrist, you know. Um, so we know, we understand that, you know, the, the world has to become so dark and, uh, there has to be so much sin amongst the world in order for those things to shape up and to take place. So, of course, this is a situation that is taking place nationally. And, of course, these kids are dealing with, you know, uh, the same type of issues and uh, the, the, the same type of struggles and sin, you know. And, of course, these kids are uh, dealing with, you know, uh, the challenges of whether or not, they want to continue to live or, you know, should I take my life, you know, in the form of suicide? And of course, these kids are dealing with, you know, uh, uh, the homicide rates and, you know, and, and, and that's why everybody, you know, uh, all these youth, you know, nowadays, you know, have handguns and, and, you know, and they're not, you know, fighting anymore, you know, as opposed to, you know, when they have disputes. And uh, which is mind boggling in itself. Like, and, and, and that's the funny part about it is like, you know, and stemming once again back from the home and, and we are living in a society where they wanted to remove, you know, physical discipline, you know, from the homes and from the school systems and going back to the Bible, you know, uh, spare the rod and spoil the child is exactly the days and times that we're living in. And because these kids have never been, you know, uh, spanked or got their uh, butt whooped at home, uh, now they they are in the streets, but they want to portray themselves as being so tough, but they scared to take a butt whooping in a, in a physical form when they have a physical dispute, you know, with somebody. So in order for them to be able to prove themselves as being tough, as opposed to, you know, getting into a fist fight with a man or, you know, and then after the fight being able to shake that man's hand when it's all over and, and, and done with, you know, if we couldn't settle the situation by having a verbal conversation, you know, which, uh, you know, for, for us and people with some sense um, tend to do, they would rather go and grab a handgun to prove themselves as being tough and choose to take somebody's life, you know, which brings on a whole nother set of circumstances, 
you know, on both sides of the fence. So, so the stronghold that we're speaking of, is, there are so many different issues, real issues in society that causes that young adult and, and, and individuals that surround them uh, to come together and while dealing with those real life issues that may or that may or may not in, uh, impact their individual lives, depending, um, it's causing them to get off balance as relates to uh, the plan for their lives, God's plans for their Absolutely. lives, their parent or parents' plans for their lives, and as we uh, uh, look at that coming back though we never got off, coming back to the WIN project. Brother James, so a part of the WIN project that we're talking about, young adults who you've been helping, trying to help uh, uh, to ensure that scholarships and, and they receive the exposure toward that higher education and so that they can see the potential that's really there in their life or whatever backgrounds they've come out of that's allowing them to be for such a time as this with the WIN Project. So share with the listeners about uh, the creeds that you have developed for the WIN Project. And while sharing, share about... uh, uh, some of the uh, events that uh, God has blessed you to uh, be a part of with the young adults uh, and their parents and some of the upcoming events that's coming in. Delve into, I uh, understand that you have athletic uh, uh, apparel line that, that, that's going to be launched soon. And uh, so I turn it all back to you on those particular topics as it relates to the WIN project, Brother James. Well, yeah, um, I think the big word that you had uh, used was uh, exposure. And, um, you know, and that that was the driving force um, behind it all. You know, um, we have have kids that um, literally are in circumstances that uh, have never even been to the other side of their town or, or, or city, you know, and all they know is, you know, the parameters of their block and, you know, and the parameters of their neighborhood. And unfortunately, they grow to an age to where they feel like it's all too late. So... <clears throat> How can we help change the narrative? You know, uh, what are the things that we can put in place to try to provide the exposure that these kids need to open their eyes to some things that um, are accessible to them and that um, are available to them um, if they connect themselves to the right resources and, you know, and to the right people. And um, oftentimes, you know, uh, these kids are not going to take the initiative to do those things. So we have to go back into these neighborhoods and uh, make, you know, these programs and things available to these kids so we can, you uh, you know, grab them by the hand and show them something different. So um, that's that's the most important thing, you know, um, just trying to get them out of the neighborhood, show them these different, you know, uh, cities, these different uh, schools, and, you know, and just giving them, you know, access to as many resources and to as many relationships, you know, uh, as, as possible, uh, because you just never know, um who is going to be the next so and so, you know, to have that type of impact that's necessary to help spark change, you know, and to help, you know, uh save a few hundred lives or, or even a couple lives, you know. And, you know, through um, you know, your commitment and your gesture, 
of, you know, um, of, of investment in community and, you know, your, your ph- philanthropy and, you know, and, and uh, your, your willingness to make yourself available, uh, it goes such a long way. And, and I want to encourage especially those that are in the prime of their lives, you know, who, who um, you know, are in spaces of influence and have platforms. Uh, that can have, you know, greater impact, uh, you know, to get involved. Please don't forget about the journey that you once had. And and don't forget that the same things that you saw coming up and the struggles that you may have had or that you may have seen someone else have, that these same things aren't generational. And because of the platform and the influence that you have because of, you know, your, your, your vehicle, you know, or occupation that God has placed you in, it's most important for you to use that in the prime of your life, of that platform, because it has such a, a, a greater uh, uh, width of, of influence and impact. So um, transitioning from there to the uh, Keys Creed, um, I put together a um, a little book, and um, I put together uh, you know the the eighty eight keys, um, which are some creeds that uh, you know. I wanted to pass on, you know, to my children and my children's children. And that um, came about because um, of my name. Um, I'm, I'm named after uh, my grandfather. My fa- my grandfather's name uh, was James Clark. And, um, and uh, he, uh, he was my grandfather on my maternal side, my mother's side of the family. And uh, when she was pregnant with me, uh, my grandfather had happened to uh, uh, pass away due to a massive heart attack. And he was very young. He was, you know, like uh, 46 years old, if I'm not mistaken. But um, uh, I had often wondered, you know, as I grew, you know, throughout my life and, you know, and especially as, I began to pay more attention to my life in the direction in which it was moving, you know, um, what he was like, you know. And and I, I would think, you know, those are natural thoughts to have, you know, especially if you're named after somebody, you know. It's like, you know, do I carry the same type of traits and characteristics, you know, of this individual, you know, that I never met before? And, you know, who who was he? You know, how did he talk? You know, how did he walk? You know, how did he carry himself? What what was his uh, thought process and, you know, and, and things of that nature? So um, as I began to think about that more and more, uh, I started to think about my children, you know, and, and as my children began to get older, it was like, okay, what about their children's children? You know, what if they share some of the same thoughts, you know, that I had? And, you know, and... and wonder the same things about me. So it was like, okay, well, what can I leave behind uh, to allow them to get into the mind of, of you know, my, myself and, and my spirit? And um, that's how the Keys Creed had came about. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and the whole 88 keys and all that stuff, you know, um, was obviously a play on words. You know, there are 88 keys, you know, to a piano and, you know, and all of that stuff and the significance uh, behind, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the number of, of eight and, you know, and all of that stuff. So, um, so I, I began to, you know, start writing. And, uh, you know, and it just became, you know, kind of a, of a genre of where I was making, 
you know, uh, statements or creeds, and then I would follow those statements up, you know, with a uh, Bible verse, you know, that uh, would give it more clarity, more truth, and more impact behind what it is that I was saying. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and then I would follow those things up uh, with, you know, a, a defining expression uh, or, or some defining words um, that, that help clarify, you know, the creed along with, you know, some uh, key terms and, you know, and stuff like that. So, and, uh, you know, and it, it, once again, it had allowed me to come up with, you know, 88 of them and, you know, and at first I was like, you know, this was something that, you know, I was just going to strictly just, you know, just give, you know, to my kids and to some family members and stuff like that. But um, as I allowed some people in my family um, to, to, to read what it is that I wrote and I began to, and, and they, you know, shared, you know, how they felt about it and, and based upon, you know, some of their reactions, you know, and they began to encourage me like, man, you might want to think about, you know, sharing this with the world. And, uh, you know, so here we are now um, to the point where the book is, you know, uh, complete. Um, you know, we are trying to um, get with a publishing company, company, so you know we can, you know, do the uh, the publishing and the edits and you know and all of that stuff, and then uh, hopefully make it available, uh, you know, for purchase uh, for those that are interested. How about the apparel apparel line? Well, as far as the uh, athletic apparel line is concerned. Uh, once again, that has stemmed from when um, and, and, and the whole play on words and just being in the place that we are in today and having, um, you know, the uh, competitive spirit and, and, and just based on emotion, um, you know, today, uh, so many different genres uh, of the world are influenced by, you know, wanting to win, and uh, and everybody, you know, wants to be associated with, you know, a winner or a winning attitude, you know, for that matter. And so we we decided to uh, develop a uh, you know an, an apparel line that would speak you know, to those things and, and, and speak uh, to the emotion of, of wanting to win and, and encouraging people to try to be, you know, the best that they could possibly be and to uh, influence uh, things in a positive manner. Because uh, once again, you know, uh, we are dealing with so many things that uh, are – you know, of darkness and are of, you know, in such a dark manner. Um, so, you know, the win apparel line is something that, uh, you know, uh, we are putting a lot of time, effort, and energy into and in developing the concepts and developing uh, how we want uh, things to look. Um, it will be a line that, uh, you know, isn't necessarily – you know, flamboyant and, and, you know, and, and flashy per se for, you know, the, the, the glitz and, and drawing attention to, um, you know, that's not my spirit. Um, and that's not the image that, you know, that I try to project, you know, um, I try to project, uh, you know, an image of that, that, um, it's a person that is confident in who he is, but at the same time, very humble and uh, very laid back, um, you know, and, and that's the uh, type of, of, of uh, image that we are trying to project, you know, um, in the clothing line, but uh, also assertive and strong, um, 
you know, and 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 once again, you know, having that uh, confidence uh, of uh, you know who you are and what you aspire to be. So um, that's what's going on yep. with the apparel line. We're hoping that uh, the apparel line will be done in the next uh, couple of months. Um, we have some pieces and designs. Uh, you know, that are currently done, you know, at the moment. But, uh, you know, we're just putting the final touches on things and, you know, and just getting all of the back uh, drops and all those things in place, you know, as far as the uh, online store and, you know, and the different sites and, you know, all the administrative work. And, you know, all, mm-hmm. we all know, you know, those things, you know, uh, mm-hmm. are, are, you know, a, a total animal you know, in itself and trying to put mm-hmm. that stuff together and, you know, and it takes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, finances uh, uh, that oftentimes we don't have, but, you know, but we operate by faith and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we, and we believe that, you know, uh, this is, you know, what we've been called to do and this is what he, he, he wants us to do. And, and we have made a lot of progress and, and, and a lot of legway, you know, and and standing, you know, um, in that faith and on that faith, uh, and we are slowly progressing, and and that's another interesting concept in itself, being able to slowly progress, because a lot of times we want to get things done, you know, right away, right away, and you end up missing a few steps here, and you don't uh, truly develop things the way that they are intended to be developed. Uh, because you didn't necessarily take your time and cross all your T's and dot your I's the way that you were supposed to, and now you're putting out a product or you're putting out, you know, uh, things that won't have the right type of impact that it should have had because um, you weren't uh, uh, led the the right way and you didn't take your time and, and do things the right way. Uh, for you to be able to have the type of success that uh, could have been available to you um, if you just would have uh, kind of slowed down and uh, allowed things to develop uh, organically. I saw we had a couple um, upcoming events. Um, share with the listeners and how they can be of support to and for you and with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> We have uh, some events coming up um, here in um, early August. Um, the the uh, what we're calling the uh, grassroots uh, basketball camp and uh, overnighter uh, that will take place uh, August the first and uh, also August the second in uh, Canton, Ohio. Um, once again, you know, going back to um, you know relationships and you know and and a lot of the uh, a younger adults now that have uh, moved on and, and had the ability to have some success, um, you know, in professional sports uh, because of our relationships, we were able to all come together and put together, you know, a basketball camp. Um, there are like uh, six or seven different individuals that are uh, coming together, you know, from the area uh, under one roof. And, and putting together, you know, a all-day basketball camp from uh, the time frames of 8 a.m. to about uh, 5 p.m. Um, these gentlemen um, have all played in college and, uh, you know, and uh, have had experience, you know, playing uh, professional basketball. And, and uh, this is their way of, uh, you know, coming back to the community and, and you know, investing their time and, invest in their knowledge and, and their uh, ability and skill set to give back uh, to the youth um, and the city of Canton. So I'm uh, very excited about that and uh, very excited uh, to see these gentlemen. And uh, and I'm happy to see, you know, their progress and their growth and uh, the results of uh, their commitments, uh, you know, to their craft and uh, becoming the young men that they have become and, you know, and their willingness to, uh, you know, be uh, rooted, um, you know, uh, from the uh, communities in which uh, they've uh, come from. 
And then, um, you know, and then the next day uh, is uh, what we call the overnighter. And uh, the overnighter is uh, is an event where, you know, we'll take uh, the youth uh, bowling and, you know, we'll take them to Sky Zone and, uh, uh, you know, and, and just um, making ourselves available uh, for them to be able to uh, enjoy themselves, and, you know, and, and fellowship amongst each other and their peers. And, uh, you know, and they'll be able to, you know, eat good and, you know, and it, there'll, there'll be a lot of festivities and stuff actually going on in the city of Canton at that time because, you know, that's a Hall of Fame weekend, you know, so it's a lot of things that, you know, are going on in the city of Canton surrounding, you know, the Hall of Fame weekend and, you know, and a lot of uh, the events are geared towards the adults. So, you know, uh, our thought process behind these things is, okay, so what about the youth? You know, what can we put in place for the youth, for them to be able to enjoy? And uh, we're willing to, you know, uh, do it, you know, all night into the morning, you know, as we all know, you know, a lot of these adults are going to be out here, you know, engaging in different things and, you know, and, and looking to have, you know, quote, unquote, what they call fun. And, uh, you know, but we wanted to provide a safe haven, you know, for the kids to come on out and be able to enjoy themselves. And, you know, and then the parents can, you know, be able to come and pick them up, you know, the next day. So those are uh, All right. two events that uh, we have mm-hmm. coming up. And then uh, the last event um, that we have, is the uh is the uh the tour the uh the, we we are going up to uh Green Bay Wisconsin uh, a good friend of mine is on the coaching staff for the uh Green Bay Packers so uh we put together an event you know along with uh, uh you know the Green Bay Packers organization it's going to be a, a two-day event. We're going to go down and stay tonight. Uh, we're going to go to uh, the practice, um, which is uh, August the 7th. That's on a Wednesday. And uh, they arrange a tour of the facilities and, um, you know, an opportunity to meet the players and the coaches and the whole nine. And, um you know, then we'll stay the night, and the next day we'll go to the preseason football game and uh, have an opportunity to enjoy that. Um, you know, there there's a cost uh, to the trip. Uh, be, um, obviously, we had to uh, rent a, uh, a uh, charter bus. It's a 56-passenger bus, uh, and we're hoping to fill the entire uh, bus with 56 passengers. Um so obviously, you know, there there's a cost um, uh, uh, to be involved, you know, uh, with these events, and uh, you know, we're trying to do everything that we can that we can to um, align ourselves and partner uh, with uh, different businesses and corporations and organizations and you know and so forth and so on to to get involved and help cover the cost. Uh, to pay for the charter buses and pay for the hotels and pay for the tickets, you know, to the game and, you know, and help pay for meals and, you know, and all of that is, uh, you know, involved in, in the cost. So uh, we would love if if you're interested uh, to partner with us and to get involved um, that you do so. Um, the uh, website is thewinproject.net. Um, you can find us. Um, you know, at at the uh, website, and um, you know, and and all the information and stuff is accessible uh, to you um, on the website. Uh, the email is uh, the Wim Project LLC at gmail dot com. That's the Wim Project LLC at gmail dot com, and uh, you know. And we are more than happy uh, to get as many people uh, and, and, like I said, businesses, organizations involved as possible. Um, and all that information uh, is uh, on the website once again. 
and uh, as well as, you know, the sponsorship packets, you know, all of that stuff and, you know, and at the different levels of, of, of sponsorship and, you know, the different things that we will do for your business and uh, corporation, organization, you know, uh, based upon the level of, you know, donation or sponsorship that you are willing to uh, uh, provide, uh, you know, for uh, the kids and, 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 and the parents, you know, within um, our communities uh, to help them get to uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, because this is this is an amazing opportunity. This is, you know, a, a, a once in, in a lifetime type opportunity, one of those uh, situations that uh, you will remember, you know, for a lifetime, you know, uh, historic Lambo field, you know, um, a chance to actually meet play the, the professional players and athletes and, you know, shake their hands and, you know, take pictures with them. And, you know, that's something that you will share, you know, uh, you know, not only with your friends, but, you know, uh, the, your children and, you know, and as you, you know, sojourn, you know, throughout your life. So it's a very unique situation, very unique opportunity. And, you know, and I hope as many people are willing to get on board with it as possible. All right, listeners, you are hearing from Brother James Keys, the founder of the Win Project. He is sharing how it began, where it is, and where it's headed. We're going to take a break, and when we return, we're going to uh, wrap up the last uh, 15, 18 minutes of a three-hour program with Brother James to where Brother James talked about earlier about the uh, the lineage of his children and grandchildren and so forth, a three-hour program allowing them to know where Brother James has come from, inspiration, where it is, where he's going without knowing all that God is going to do with the Wind Project and or Brother James. We'll return in a few minutes, but at the same time, listen to the words of the song. James Keyes, the founder of the WIN Project, is spending these last few minutes just talking about the reality of life and that which surrounds us. You've been listening to James talk about his sojourn, starting off one way, business-wise, coming involved in sports, becoming a leader, and now leading, waiting on God while taking a walk around himself. You know, one of the things I appreciate in listening to Brother James and what he was sharing earlier, he didn't say that um, he was involved with the young adults just to get them into the sports environment as it relates to a career interest. He's leading them to where they have to make the decision to what they want to do with their life, hopefully with God's input and those that surround them, whether it's a parent or parents or mentors or leaders or whomever. I'm reminded before turning it back over to Brother James as we continue on with this real-world scenarios going on around us that's affecting all of us and your child and their future. But I'm reminded of, uh, of uh, about a week ago coming back with young adults and just posing some simple questions because – they appeared to have it going on, they thought, until it was time to think about where they were and where they were headed. And the individuals I'm thinking of, they were asked by me what their aspirations were. And it was interesting. One said that they wanted to create their own automobile. They didn't say drive. They said create one. Now, they were in for a surprise. Another one said that they had always dreamt about becoming a journalist. Another one said, hey, they just wanted to be their best in business. Well, two of them were offered internships, an opportunity to go through a door on both areas. The third will receive theirs, Lord willing, Monday, as relates to doors of business. 
And so what Brother James is talking about as it relates to the WIN project, you got to remember, listeners, he talked about the negative, and now it's turned into the WIN. He's also talking about the fact that when he comes across young adults and their parent or parents, whatever the strongholds that happen to be surrounding their lives, involving to trust, God using those doors of opportunity for Brother James to walk in and share the importance of being involved, as he did with you, the listeners, to become involved with the WIND Project as God leads you in so many different ways. Brother James, so we've been talking about the young adults and the parent and the parents, and uh, uh, have we touched on the men and their roles as it relates to uh, what's going on in their community, apart from their home? How can they become involved in the community that's spreading nationally to be a voice of reason with integrity, but with God leading on behalf of their young adults or the young adults in their community where they happen to reside or their state? What say you, Brother James? <clears throat> I just honestly believe that there has to be a want. You know, you have to understand that uh, the life that you're living is bigger than you. You know, uh, we've been placed here for a reason, and that reason isn't for uh, self, you know, self-gratitude and, you know, uh, from a selfish uh, perspective. Um, you know, um, as individuals, yes, we can have an impact on the world, but in order to have that impact, it takes a selfless mentality in order to have impact. So how can, you know, I develop uh, this mentality, this way of thinking, um, in order to uh, make myself available um, to help build, you know, young men, young women, um, we have to find the time uh, to be able to invest back into our communities or from which we came, especially if you are concerned about the future of the nation and of uh, the world. You got to remember that uh, at some point, you know, in our lives, you know, we are going to get older and um, we are going to get to a place where the torch has to be passed, you know. And once again, you know, speaking to uh, legacy, you know, um, and I'm understanding that uh, through the transitions of life, the one common thing, theme that I find out by having conversations, conversations with older people, you know, which I appreciate so much because they have so much wisdom. They talk about how they navigated through life. They found their calling they were able to establish themselves, you know, uh, mentally, emotionally, financially, so forth and so on. And then they got to a point to where they wanted to give it back. They wanted to pass it back. But I think that if we are able to find the balance of being able to give back while we're in our prime and not necessarily towards the end of our so sojourn, that we can uh, have an even more greater impact um, because we have, you know, more of the energy and more of the drive um, to have that uh, relationship, um, you know, with the youth, um, 
in a more uh, impactful way. Um, I had came across uh, something that has said, you know, um, how do you change, you know, uh, uh, a world and a nation. And uh, it was by changing the or 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 alter altering their reality uh, through demoralization. And this is the code in which uh, the elite are living by. They want to demoralize humanity as much as possible in order to alter reality. And if you pay attention to the world and what's going on today, these are the very things that we are seeing, you know, what's normal, becoming abnormal, you know, so forth and so on. And I think that's a perfect segue to kind of mention a key or a creed, you know, from my, from my book. And it is the world has been constructed upon manipulation and facades. People want honesty but won't adhere to the truth. The truth will always force people to relinquish control. And then, you know, the Bible says in John eight thirty two, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that's what it's all about. It's all about, you know, providing as much truth as possible, you know, to our youth and to the world you know, and not deceiving them, which will ultimately, you know, cause their souls to be in damnation forever because we're speaking on eternity, and that's what the race is all about at the end of the day. It's a marathon. It's not It's not a sprint. It's a marathon, and that marathon continues past the physical onto the spiritual. Listeners, you're hearing and have heard from Brother James Keyes, the founder of the WIN Project. You heard the Why I Never Project, how it all came about, a nonprofit 501c3 corporation designed for the young people to provide scholarships and exposure towards higher education and potential career interests. We have talked about it all. We've talked about the parent and the parents, the men, the dads, the moms, the young people, that which is occurring. That's important. But you also heard Brother James leave off so that his lineage can hear how he began, the struggle, the frustration, the weight, back in the race, the race that all of us are running even as adults. But the race is for the soul. That's where the battleground is. But most important, if you haven't heard anything at all with Brother James Keyes throughout these interviews, he has learned, as I continue to do, and he is learning. You and I can do nothing without 